Scott here. Okay, so uh, we talk a lot about certification in IT. It's very important. We have lots of certifications in the industry. We tend to use them pretty heavily. Uh, they're kind of important because we do a lot of work with vendor products and we kind of need to verify uh, that people know about those products and that they are at very least aware of what vendors feel about those products. So certifications tend to be pretty important. One of the, maybe the most well-known certification series in the industry is the MCSE, the Microsoft Certified uh, Systems Engineer, right? And that's been around since the NT days, since the mid 90s. Uh, it's very important and it's very uh, useful and it's very well done, it's very well known. Uh, in more recent years, since the early 2000s, they added um, the MCSA, the Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator, uh, which is a little bit of a weird title considering how they're done, and it's basically a junior level of the MCSE. You get the MCSA on the way to the MCSE. And on the way to the MCSA, traditionally you get the MCP, the Microsoft Certified Professional. And it took a group of MCP exams to uh, get to the MCSA, and then you added even more to get to the MCSE, and long ago there was another step, the MCSE plus I. Um, and so this series very well known and it's it's really good right I if you're working in the Windows world I would recommend it a lot um, whether for uh, your career obviously having some certs looks good uh, but it's more uh, that the study path for that is you take the time and learn the technologies uh, these certifications really walk you through a lot of things that Microsoft wants you to know and Microsoft tends to know a lot about their own products and they tend to do a pretty good job of recommending things that make sense so they point you in directions that are smart even if you don't do those exact things in your job or plan to do them understanding what Microsoft expects or how Microsoft would like you to do things and sometimes that's the biggest thing um, can be very important that last point is interesting because Microsoft uses the certification process as a way to train their professionals on the future of Microsoft products. So even though some technology may just be being introduced in a current certification, it may be being pushed in such a way uh, that it gives us insight into the fact that this is what Microsoft intends you to be doing so that you're ready for the future because they're going to make changes later. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff that may not be obvious the first time you do it, but can be very valuable. Now, what comes up is this other series of certifications called the MTA, and this is a much newer and not very well-known set of certifications. By newer, they've still been around like, I don't know, 15 years. I've been talking about them for a really long time. But what's important is they are not a professional certification. The MCP is the lowest level professional certification that Microsoft has. And it doesn't certify you as anything, it's just professional, that's it. You're just this one technology, whatever that certification is, you passed it, right? It's a very, very junior, very entry level, very isolated thing. They're great, highly recommend them. You do a lot of work on Exchange Server, get the Exchange MCP. Do SQL Server, get the SQL Server, MCP. You do Windows Server 2012, get the 2012, MCP. Great, Fo focus on that one thing, show that you know it. Great, nothing wrong with that. That's wonderful. And they're professional certifications. They go on your resume. They stay on your resume basically until you retire. Uh, they make sense. The MTA is not a professional certification. It is not just below the MCP, it is dramatically below the MCP. It is a completely different category of certification. The MTA is designed, at least originally, around having high schoolers take this as like a rudimentary placement exam to help high schools and colleges for incoming freshmen figure out how much someone knew so they can put them into their correct starting classes. This is useful, it's a good thing, the MTA is not bad. If you're 14 and you wanna get into IT and you have no idea what's out there, the MTA might provide you some guidance and some really low level, easy stuff to, to sink your teeth into, great, use it for what it's for. Show it to a high school, show it to a college, be like, I am ready to take these classes and here's why they would have a hard time turning you down. But the reality is, is that they're very low level. So if you're gonna put that much effort in, if you're that passionate, go out and get your MCP. Instead of the MTA and show somebody, show them that you're ready to be the teacher. Not that the MCP is going to make you a teacher, but chances are that's the most that your teacher or professor is going to have in any particular technology. You can come in with the same as them. That's a big deal. That shows dedication. That might get you a job. The MTA is not something you would ever put on a resume, not even at your first job. So that's not useful from a career standpoint. And it doesn't teach you very much because it's such a low level. So you don't really use it as an education path the way you would with an MCP on your way to an MCSA. The MTAs also don't build up to anything. You don't get a bunch of MTAs and get some bigger professional certification 
foundation down the road. They're not a foundation. So they have this one specific purpose of qualifying you for very spe special high school and college classes. If you're doing it at the college level, rethink your college because this is not the level that a college should be using to determine anything. If you're doing it at the high school level, Great, but your teachers will tell you when you need them. Don't just take them. If you're gonna just if you're gonna spend the time and money, go for an MCP. Sure, it's harder, but it's valuable in the end. The only time that an MTA makes sense for anybody is if you have a school that requires it for you to show uh, something for a specific course. For example, you have a foundations of databases, and so this class requires that, and you don't want to take some other class to get into it, or you're competing against other people for the class, and they say, well, you have to take the MTA to place. Great, that's when you take it. You don't take it under other circumstances. For some reason, in the last couple of years, we've started seeing an uptick in the number of people who are looking at the MTA as something they want to put on their resume or something they want to do to build their career. And it's, it's weird because the MTA has been around for a really long time, and I saw it mentioned maybe one time, someone who was confused. And it's like, oh, I'll start here thinking that it was like a requirement for something higher or something. It is not. It is something you simply skip, and as someone who knows they want to go into IT, rather than someone who's investigating if they want to go into IT, you start with the MCP uh, if you're going with the Microsoft path. And if you're not going into Microsoft, you don't do any of these, right? These are all Microsoft specific. Uh, if you're looking for a general starting point, look at something like the Network Plus. That's very general for all careers, Microsoft, Linux, networking, database, whatever. Everybody needs to know that stuff. So that's a great place to start. But if you know you want a Microsoft career, MCPs, that's where you start. And uh, save the MTAs for the high school students.